books. Gateways to Other Worlds, a way to experience life through the eyes and voice of another, an escape to a different place and time, a source of knowledge and a source of controversy. If I say uh, ban this book because it's going to incite some type of violence, how do I know it's going to incite that type of violence and, and who is it going to incite violence in? Terry Doughty is an English professor at Vancouver Island University in Nanaimo. She says the conversation is more important than the potential to offend. The conversation's hard and sometimes it gets heated and sometimes people say regrettable things, but I think it's better to have the conversation out and open. Books are challenged by all kinds of people for all kinds of reasons graphic novels for adults where the lead woman's breasts seem abnormally large. Harry Potter has been challenged for promoting and glorifying witchcraft. Even the Bible has been challenged. Darby Love is a librarian at the North Nanaimo branch of the Vancouver Island Regional Library. Anybody can challenge anything. So you could say you don't like this book. I, you know, I'd like it removed. It's a request, basically, um, that's done formally. Darby says there are a lot of challenged books in Canada and that that's a reflection of our democracy. The library has a request for reconsideration form that people can fill out. Generally, it stays in the collection um, because we try to offer the widest variety of materials possible. A banning, it's more of an official decree. So a government can ban a book, uh, the Catholic Church can ban a book. Um, but yeah, we wouldn't be yes. banning a book. The library follows yes. the Canadian uh, Libraries Bible Association been, you know, statement of ways. intellectual freedom, Very holding the belief so that it is an individual's responsibility and right to choose what materials to read. That includes parents monitoring the materials their children have access to. Terry says it is books for children and youth that are most often challenged, including Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now is the problem with the book for many people is the Oompa Loompas. Little Oompa Loompas you have underlined, starving yeah. to death. What a terrible country it is. Yeah, and then it, they're basically, he's, he's exploited them. He's brought them back. He keeps them locked up in his factory to work in his factory. All and day all and they, all, night. all Exactly, and all they want are to eat cocoa beans. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian. That's an amazing book. It's funny. It's heartbreaking. Uh, it's about a boy who's growing up on a reservation who's super bright uh, and has the opportunity to go to school off the reservation to a white school mm -hmm. because he can get a better education and he does it and he agonizes over um, whether he's betraying his people or not, whether he's betraying his true identity or not. Mm -hmm. um, his parents are alcoholics and they are wonderful loving parents at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's full of these contradictions. The question of what an individual should or shouldn't be reading isn't new. For as long as stories have been written down, there has been controversy. I don't think they're being banned in Canada today um, as, you know, there's, these cases are generally in schools. Um, but people definitely challenge things in public libraries. Um, but it's, it's very much something we need to remain vigilant about because it's happening in the world. And it translates into other areas of our life, lives like the internet too. Like, do you want to be able to read whatever you want on the internet? I do, personally. The challenges books face change with the times. As our accepted values change, so does the impact of the ideas and stories portrayed within those books. And while we change as a whole in society, our choices remain individual. In Nanaimo, I'm Kate Bergen.